Uh, welcome to my course on genome editing and engineering. In this module, we are going to discuss about ethical concerns uh, with respect to germline uh, gene editing. Uh, we will begin with some discussion in bioethics and biosafety. Uh, let us now first uh, look into the origins of the term bioethics. Uh, the term bioethics was coined by uh, Fritz Zehar, a uh, Protestant pastor, philosopher and educator in uh, Hell and the Cell in 1926. Uh, Fritz published an article entitled Bioethics, a review of the ethical relationship of humans to animals and plants and proposed a bioethical imperative in 1927 uh, extending Kant's moral imperative to all forms of life. Uh, he evaluated contemporary physiological knowledge and the ethical issues surrounding the emergence of pluralistic uh, secular society. In the process, Fritz reinterpreted moral obligations uh, toward both human and non-human life forms by defining bioethics as an academic field, a guiding principle and a versu. Let us look into uh, some uh, historical developments uh, in the field. Uh, since the time of Saraka and Susrita, uh, India has been blessed with a magnificent, magnificent code of medical ethics. The standards for a good instructor and someone who should pursue medicine are embodied in the uh, code of Ayurveda. Additionally, uh, Ayurveda provides advice on how to interact with patients and the family members as well as helpful hints for us to utilize when addressing topics like uh, organ transplantation and brain death uh, in the current context. Uh, if you go back to the era of uh, World War II. Uh, heinous uh, crimes took place uh, on captives held in military concentration camps in Nazi Germany. During this time, defenseless individuals were forcibly subjected to medical studies with questionable uh, scientific merit. Uh, when the war ended in 1945, the victorious Allied powers enacted the International Military Tribunal on November 19, uh, 1945. And in one of the first uh, trials conducted under the Nuremberg Military Tribunals in 1947, which became famous as the doctor's trial, uh, in which physicians from the German Nazi party were tried and punished for crimes against humanity for the atrocious experiments they carried out on unwilling prisoners of war. Uh, this verdict also resulted in the creation of the Nuremberg Code, a set of 10 ethical principles for human experimentation. The code aimed to protect human subjects from enduring the kind of cruelty and exploitation the prisoners endured at the concentration camps. Van Rensselaer Potter, an American scientist, introduced the idea of bioethics as global ethics in his 1971 book, Bioethics, A Bridge to the Future. With his extensive and lengthy experience in cancer research, Potter presented a novel interdisciplinary idea with the aim of fusing ethics and science. He intended to create a conversation uh, between the science of life and usable knowledge and as a result he coined the term bioethics. Potter's bioethics united humility, responsibility and multidisciplinary and intercultural uh, competency. One of the landmark events in the field of bioethics and biosafety is the Esiloma Conference on Recombinant DNA, which is also considered as the beginning of bioethics in the field of uh, biotechnology. In 1975, about 140 scientists, doctors and legislators gathered in the Esiloma Conference Center in State Beach, California in order to debate the ethical implications of uh, genetic engineering. Uh, certain principles of biosafety were established at this conference with the object of preventing an accidental leakage of recombinant organisms which could affect human beings, animals or the environment. The Esiloma conference was a milestone for science because it was a result of self-regulation proposed by the scientists themselves. At this conference, the scientists agreed that research with recombinant DNAs would proceed but appropriate safeguards should be outlined. Uh, since this meeting, a lot of developments has happened in the field of bioethics, biosafety and regulation. Uh, and now, many of these operating principles and guiding principles are applied uh, to the field of uh, gene editing and also some new uh, uh, 
guidelines have uh, come, come up in the recent years uh, to help the uh, field of genome editing uh, grow and prosper in a safer way and in a more uh, human way. Let me share with you a tweet by Nafil Council on uh, Bioethics. Uh, uh, you can see here uh, this particular tweet on January 7, 2019 and uh, the Nafil Council on Bioethics has presented here a beautiful graphics uh, depicting what is on the horizon uh, for bioethics when they have uh, declared to have created an infographic of developments in biology and medicine uh, that might engage and challenge public interest and public uh, values. Bioethics ethics is a very uh, big uh, subject as you can see from these graphics by Nafil, uh, Nafil Council on uh, Bioethics uh, ranging from uh, human reproduction to saving, uh, saving human beings or the birth and date health and society, food farming and environment, even crime and security and finally impacting uh, research uh, ethics. So, uh, I will not go into detail of this uh, uh, infographics, but you can uh, see here uh, the genome editing of gametes and embryos and uh, other important uh, trending topics in the field of modern biology like whole genome sequencing of embryos and uh, fetuses, uh, also womb replacements and then uh, synthesizing entire uh, human genomes. Uh, the idea of uh, showing you these uh, graphics is to show you uh, the contextual relevance of uh, the genome editing uh, in, in uh, respect to bioethics and how it is becoming one of the uh, main topic of uh, concern and uh, discussions. So, there are others uh, like uh, treating of uh, biological uh, aging and uh, or maybe decision making in uh, pediatric care then uh, microbiome uh, resource. Uh, many of these uh, include uh, the intervention of either genetic engineering or uh, genome uh, editing. And one of the uh, area uh, is the epigenetic aging, aging and also uh, the epigenetics as a whole uh, has a lot of importance from the point of view of uh, bioethics. So, let us now try to understand what actually is uh, bioethics. Uh, bioethics is the study of ethical, social and legal issues that arise in biomedicine and biomedical uh, research as defined by NIEHS uh, and you can see uh, bioethics is not just one uh, simple thing. So many uh, uh, different aspects are uh, connected to bioethics. So, it has many uh, subdomains or subdisciplines like uh, medical ethics, environmental ethics, uh, public health ethics and research ethics. Each of these uh, subdisciplines uh, focuses on different uh, issues. For example, uh, medical ethics focuses on issues in healthcare, environmental ethics focuses on issues pertaining to the relationship between human activities and the environment, um, public health issues addresses ethical issues in uh, public health, while research ethics focuses issues in the conduct of uh, research. Let us uh, discuss a little bit about the ethical concerns in uh, human gene editing. The human germline is the focus of the majority of ethical debates surrounding genome editing since any modifications performed there would be handed down to subsequent generations as it is inheritable. Although the discussion of uh, genome editing is uh, not uh, new, uh, it has recently attracted attention because uh, of the finding that CRISPR may make it easier and more accurate than uh, previous methods like ZFN, TALEN or meganucleases and uh, studies that would uh, make gene therapy safe and successful uh, should uh, continue however, according to bioethicists and experts. Human genome editing for reproductive purposes should not currently be uh, undertaken as uh, expressed by many uh, bioethicists. The majority of uh, stakeholders agree that uh, ongoing public discussion and debate are essential uh, to let the public determine whether or not germline modification uh, should be permitted 
and due to ethical and security concerns around 40 countries including 15 in the western Europe have prohibited or outlawed research on germline editing uh, back in 2014. So, this is an international regulatory landscape uh, regarding germline, uh, human germline uh, gene modification. You can see these uh, countries with uh, the dark color where it is uh, banned through legislation. While uh, countries like India, China, uh, there are uh, guidelines issued uh, for uh, ban. And then many countries, uh, there are uh, total uh, restriction, it is restrictive. However, there are countries like uh, 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 here, USSR and uh, also some Latin American uh, countries or uh, some countries in Africa where the uh, position is ambiguous. What are the various ethical uh, considerations? The number one is safety. Uh, it is the main priority due to the potential for off target consequences. Uh, there may be editing in the wrong spot and uh, mosaicism when some cells carry the edit but others uh, do not. Uh, germline genome editing should not be used for clinical reproductive purposes until it is uh, uh, established through research as a risk free uh, technique. Majority of researchers and ethicists is of the opinion that any risk cannot be justified by the potential benefit that is uh, going to bring. According to some experts, uh, genome editing in embryos uh, will not provide any advantage over already available treatments like in vitro fertilization and uh, pre-implantation uh, genetic diagnosis. So, uh, it should be uh, uh, discouraged from being uh, used. Even for therapeutic purposes, uh, many uh, worry that any genome editing will put us on a slippery slope towards using it for questionable uh, non-therapeutic and objectives of uh, enhancing of particular uh, characters or phenotypes. Others are of the opinion that once genome editing has been proven to be a safe and effective technology, then it should be permitted to treat uh, hereditary uh, disorders as there are many people who are suffering uh, due to uh, genetic diseases. Whatever the uh, case, uh, policy and regulation should be used to address issues regarding uh, augmentation. And last but not the least, some who have commented on the subject are uh, afraid that the regulation of genome editing for reproduction would uh, differ uh, between various countries leading to chaos and issues of uh, universal uh, acceptability. The second most important thing is informed consent. Uh, people are concerned that because the patients of germline and uh, germline therapy are the embryo and the future generations and yet unborn, it is hard to gain informed uh, permission. Uh, for this, there is a counter argument uh, uh, that parents already make a lot of choices uh, that will impact their future offsprings even if they are equally uh, difficult like in the case of uh, IVF. As long as the dangers of germline therapy are unknown, scientists and bioethicists are concerned about the likelihood of obtaining properly informed permission from prospective uh, parents. The third important point is justice and equity. Uh, as it happens with any uh, emerging new technologies, there is a concern that genome editing will only be accessible to the wealthy and will increase existing disparities in access to healthcare and other interventions. Uh, many worry that uh, taken to its extreme germline editing could create classes of individuals defined by the quality of their uh, engineered uh, genome. One of the important points is the potential risks uh, due to this technology and uh, there are definitely certain benefits of heritable genome editing, uh, but there are also equally various kinds of potential risk associated with the technology. Uh, we are not aware of certain unintended uh, consequences. For example, uh, in case of heritable genome editing, there are two distinct uh, concerns expressed by the scientific community. Uh, number one is the possibility of off target effects of the editing process as in the case of somatic uh, genome editing. And uh, whatever standards are developed for somatic applications, there will be less tolerance for off target effects in germline applications. Second is the intended genome edits themselves might have unintended consequences even in the absence of off target effects. In the case of heritable genome editing to convert a well understood 
disease causing variant gene to a widely occurring non methyl pathological variant. The editing change would be to a version of the gene that is known not to have deleterious uh, uh, consequences. One important aspect is the long term follow up. Carefully monitored clinical trial protocols would be required for heritable genome editing with attention to monitoring off target events as well as the efficiency and correctness of the uh, specific edit. And since humans are going to live for around 60, 70, 80 years, uh, the team who monitors uh, the people receiving the heritable genome editing uh, has to be uh, uh, constantly uh, changed uh, with proper information being uh, documented, recorded and passed on uh, as the team uh, changes. Uh, heritable genome editing trials would likely require long term prospective follow up studies across subsequent generations. So, which makes the follow up rather more challenging. Even those who have uh, volunteered to be research subjects cannot be compelled to participate in long term uh, follow up however. Uh, principles for the governance of human uh, genome editing. Uh, number one is uh, promoting well-being. The principles of promoting well-being supports providing benefits and preventing harm to those affected often referred to in the bioethics literature the principles of beneficence and uh, uh, non-maleficence. Uh, Second point is the transparency. The principles of transparency requires openness and sharing of information in ways that are accessible and understandable to stakeholders. Third is due care. Uh, the principle of due care for patients enrolled in research studies or receiving clinical care requests proceeding carefully and deliberately and only when supported by sufficient and robust evidence. Fourth is responsible science. The principle of responsible science underpins adherence to the highest standard of research from bands to bedside in accordance with international professional norms. Fifth one is the respect for persons. The principle of respect for persons requires the cognition of the personal dignity of all individuals acknowledgement of the centrality of personal choice and respect for individual decisions. All people have equal moral value regardless of their genetic qualities. Sixth principle is the fairness. The principle of fairness requires that like cases be treated alike and that risks and benefits be equitably uh, distributed which is also known as distributive justice. The seventh point is translational cooperation. The principle of translational cooperation supports a commitment uh, to collaborative approaches to research and governance while respecting different cultural uh, context. Let us now discuss about the ethical issues in uh, basic research. Somatic cell based basic science research will be subject to regulations aimed at protecting lab personnel and the environment including particular assessment by institutional biosafety committees for work utilizing recombinant DNA. Uh, research involving embryo is uh, much more debatable as uh, uh, mentioned a few states in the United States have uh, laws against using very viable embryos for uh, research. Since the 1990s the Dickey Weaker amendment has been adopted time and again as part of the health and human uh, services appropriation process including in the bills introduced for funding in uh, 2017 despite being legal in the majority of states. Research that puts embryos at risk generally may not be funded by the US uh, Department of Human and Health Services. The Dickey Weaker amendment uh, states that a none of the funds made available in this act may be used uh, for the creation of a human embryo or embryos for research purposes or Research in which a human embryo or embryos are destroyed, discarded or knowingly subjected to risk of injury or death greater than that allowed for research on fetuses in utero under 45 CFR 46.204B and section 498B of the Public Health Service Act uh, 42 USC 289GB. And number B. For purposes of this section the term human embryo or embryos includes any organism not protected as a human subject under 45 uh, CFR 46 as of the date of the enactment of this act that is derived by fertilization, parthenogenesis, cloning or any other means from one or more uh, human gametes or human uh, diploid uh, cells. Germline cell or gene editing. 
Germline refers to the uh, sex cells like eggs and sperms uh, that sexually reproducing organisms use to pass on their genomes from one generation to the next which is parent to offspring or vertical inheritance. Uh, egg and sperm cells are called germ cells in contrast to the other cells of the body which are called uh, somatic cells. Uh, there are various uh, reasons uh, which are being justified for laboratory studies of uh, human embryos. Uh, for example, uh, in vitro studies involving studies of fertilization in vitro uh, is required for the improvements uh, in in vitro fertilization and pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, PZD possible improvements in contraception, uh, improved culture of early human embryos. Uh, will lead to the improvements in IVF and uh, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis insights into reasons for miscarriages and congenital malformations. Uh, development of extra embryonic tissues will give us insights into reasons for failures in implement implantation and for miscarriages. And uh, isolation and in vitro differentiation of pluripotent stem cells uh, will uh, help us in building in vitro models for human diseases for experimental testing of drugs and other therapies, improved uh, cells for somatic gene cell therapies and for regenerative uh, medicine. Investigations of sperm and oocyte development will uh, help us uh, developing possible novel approaches uh, to uh, infertility. So, overall we can see that there are a lot of uh, 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 advantages using human embryos uh, for uh, laboratory studies. In, in, in solving many of the scientific challenges, uh, but uh, there are many regulations and ethical problems uh, which has to be respected uh, equally. Uh, the research context of germline gene editing and ethical implications. Number one is the challenges related to the evaluation of safety and efficacy of germline gene editing. Policy documents and recommendations issued by professional groups as well as by individual authors state that safety and efficacy of GGE must be further studied and evaluated in order to consider its potential implementation in the uh, clinic. Second issue is the safety issues in germline uh, genome uh, editing. The main technical problem with safety implications for potential clinical GGE in human embryos include uh, mosaicism, a situation where not all cells of an embryo or organism have the same DNA, uh, in this case the desired uh, DNA uh, modification. Uh, off target effects where unintended changes in the genome outside of the targeted sequence may occur or occurs. On target undesired modifications uh, also happen uh, due to interaction within or next to the uh, target locus. The third uh, issue is the use of embryos. The use of embryos in research raises a number of ethical aspects. Uh, in spite of the uh, promises we have discussed in the table, uh, one commonly discussed ethical issues is that related to the destruction of uh, human embryos. We can distinguish the following types of embryos used in uh, GGE research based on their source, uh, so called supernumerary or surplus embryos which are left over after clinical IVF uh, procedures, uh, embryos created specifically for the purpose of research using gametes, uh, leftover surplus from IVF, then embryos created or specifically for the purpose of research using gametes uh, procured specifically for uh, research. Since uh, human embryos are humans uh, in the earliest developmental stage, their destruction raises uh, ethical questions beyond doubt. The three main diverse points of view on the moral status or value of the human embryos uh, being uh, put across are number one, human embryos have the same moral status as any other uh, born uh, human individual. Another uh, view is that human embryos have same moral status oblique value, but not the same as a born human. Uh, there are variations within this view. For example, some say that moral status or value of embryos increase uh, during their uh, development. The third view is that human embryos have no moral status or their moral status value is the same of as of any other type of uh, human cells, but not uh, equal to the uh, human. Another important uh, issue is the oocyte uh, procurement. Using human eggs in particular raises concerns regarding the origin of the gametes used in GGE research. Although extra oocytes and sperm from IVF treatments can be used 
there might not be as many gametes with the appropriate genotypes uh, available. An alternate strategy used in the study by Zhang et al. involved using wild type oocytes uh, provided as excess after IVF and obtaining sperm from a man who was affected by the condition in order to examine embryos heterozygous for the particular disease causing gene in 2019. Oocytes can also be taken particularly from uh, women for recess purposes which raises more serious uh, ethical uh, concern. Uh, genome sequencing is emerging as one of the important issues in the current uh, era. Uh, genome sequencing of embryonic cells is done to confirm that an embryo has been altered in the desired way and to check for off target uh, occurrences. In order to serve as a reference sequence, the whole genome of gamete donors uh, is also sequenced for instance from blood. Researchers also get a lot of genomic uh, sequencing data from gamete donors uh, in this procedure. The use of study participants in normal that is non-GGE genomic research context for whole genome uh, sequencing and whole exome sequencing already raises significant ethical, legal and uh, social uh, difficulties. Uh, this LC uh, uh, frequently center on concerns regarding the privacy and confidentiality of genomic data, how to obtain fully informed consent from research participants, the possibility of subjects withdrawing from the study as well as concerns regarding the return of research results including a right uh, not to know. Other issues related to research on germline genome editing. Uh, introducing GGE into the clinic would require additional study which raises additional issues to evaluate the effects of embryonic DNA alterations on the growth and functionality of an adult organism as well as future generations. Study on animals would be necessary in addition to study on human embryos as was previously noted. Oocyte harvesting, in vitro fertilization and implantation of the fertilized eggs to create pregnancy are likely steps in this research which is comparable to experiments done on humans and may cause pain and discomfort uh, to the uh, animals. So with this we come to end of uh, part A of this lecture, we will continue this lecture in part B. Mm -hmm.